Hi there. Welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're on Chapter 3, Trigonometric Functions. And in this lesson, we'll be looking at sec, cosec, and cotangent. Now, secant, or sec, cosecant, or cosec, and cotangent, or cot, are the reciprocals of the standard trig functions, cosine, sine, and tangent. And they're always abbreviated to sec, cosec, and cot. So sec of x would be 1 divided by the cosine of x. And this is undefined the value of x where cos x would equal 0, because you can't divide by 0. Cosec of x is equal to 1 divided by sine x. Same issue if sine x is equal to 0. And cot x is equal to 1 over tan x. Same issue again if tan x equals 0. Now notice, it's not intuitive, this. You would expect that sec would be 1 over sine. And you would expect that cosec would be 1 over cos. But it's back to front from what you would expect them to be. It's important to remember that. And in the same way that tan can be written as sine divided by cos, because cot is 1 divided by tan, it means that cot x is equal to cos divided by sine. OK, three questions for you to have a quick go out on your calculator. Uh, calculators don't tend to have sec, cosec, or cot on them. So you have to find a way to work out the answer using sine, cosine, and tan. Pause the video, come back when you're ready. OK, we'll go through these together. First of all, the sec of 35 degrees. The first thing you have to say is, is that's 1 divided by the cosine of 35 degrees. That you can look up on the calculator. It gives you about 0.819. Do that division, and you get about 1.22. There's always a question over how accurate you need to write answers. Frequently, they don't tell you in the question. If they don't, the rule of thumb is work to three significant figures. And that's normally abbreviated to 3SF or 3SF with an S on the end. Second question, cosec of 157 degrees. Cosec is 1 over sine, so that'll be 1 over the sine of 157. Look that up. And that's what you should get. 1 divided by that is about 2.56, again, to three significant figures. Cotangent is quite a big angle now. There is no limit to how big an angle can be. There's no limit to how small it can be. So it can go plus as far as infinity. It can go minus as far as infinity. Cotangent is 1 over tan. So you need to look up tan 760 on the calculator. Your calculator will have no problem with that. Should give you about 0.839, which is 1.19 to three significant figures. Now, sometimes they do want exact answers to questions. Uh, and especially if this is on a non-calculated paper, it is important that you know what is about to come. There are certain angles where you need to know the exact value of sine, cos, and tan. And you need to know the exact values of sec, cosec, and cot. The first uh, angles we'll look at are 30 and 60 degrees. In order to look at those, we need to sketch an equilateral triangle with side 2, which would look something like that. Cut the triangle in half with a line that bisects the bottom side in two at right angles. Using Pythagoras, uh, 2 squared minus 1 squared would give us 3, so the vertical height must be root 3. And the angles will be 30 and 60. It's an equilateral triangle, so that's 60, and this will be a half of 60 to get 30. Then we can work out sine, cos, and tan in the normal way. Sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, which is a half. Uh, cosec is 1 divided by that. 1 divided by a half is 2. Cosine of, uh, si oh, sine of 60, sorry, would be opposite over hypotenuse again, root 3 over 2. Cosec is 1 over that. 1 over that fraction flips the fraction upside down, so it becomes 2 over root 3. Cosine of 30, adjacent over hypotenuse, that is root 3 over 2. Sec, again, 1 over that, flips the fraction upside down, 2 over root 3. Cos 60 would be a half, so sec 60 is 1 divided by a half, which is 2. Tan 30, opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. Cot 30 will be 1 divided by that, which is root 3. And tan 60 is root 3 over 1, which is root 3 and cot will be 1 divided by root 3. 
The other angles you're supposed to know are 45 degrees, 0 and 90. We'll just look at 45 for the moment. To work out what happens with 45 degrees, you sketch an isosceles triangle where one angle is a right angle and the other two 45 degrees. So something like that, set the side to equal one. You'll have a right angle here and these two angles will be 45. Using Pythagoras, we can work out the length of the hypotenuse, which will be root two. Then same as before, sine of 45, is opposite over hypotenuse, which is one over root two. Cosec will be one divided by that. So cosec of 45 degrees is root two. Exactly the same thing for cos. Cosine of 45 degrees is one over root two, and the sec of 45 degrees is also root two. The tangent of 45 degrees, opposite over adjacent, is just one divided by one, which is one. And the cotangent is one divided by that, which is still one. A few more quick reminders that you will need to remember to do the questions that are coming. It's quite a lot of them, actually. First of all, the graph of sine x. It's symmetrical about various points. It's symmetrical about 90 degrees, about 270, about 450. And you could keep on adding at 180 degrees, multiples of 180. And you get more angles around which it's symmetrical. What's the consequence of that symmetry? It means, for instance, looking around 90, because it's symmetrical around 90, the sine of 90 plus x is exactly the same as the sine of 90 minus x. So, for instance, if x was 30 degrees, the sine of 120 is identical to the sine of 60. With cosine, it's symmetrical around 0, 180, 360. Keep on adding on multiples of 180. What that means is working around zero, for instance, the cosine of x and the cosine of minus x, they're exactly the same as each other. Cos 40, cos minus 40, for example, they are the same. Tangent, the easiest way to think about tangent is just that it repeats every 180 degrees. So the tangent 120 is the same as the tangent of 300, because all I've done is add on 180. If you add on or take away multiples of 180, you'll always get the same answer. The graphs of sine x and cos x, however, they repeat every 360 degrees. So the sine of 30 would be the same as the sine of 390 if you add it on 360. The other thing that you will need to remember for this question is how radians work. I think if you're going to remember one thing for radians, this is probably it. 180 degrees is exactly the same as pi radians. And you can work from there to work out anything else that you need to know converting between degrees and radians. Okay, there's four examples here. And it says without a calculator. So have a go at doing these four questions without a calculator. And in each case, you have to write down the exact value of the trigonometric function of the angle. Pause the video, come back when you're ready. Okay, we'll have a look at these. So the first question, uh, a sec of 45 degrees. First thing that you do probably is say, well, sec is one over cos. So we need one over the cosine of 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees is one over root two. It's one of the values you should just learn and remember. One over one over root two simplifies just to root two. So the sec of 45 degrees is root two. Second question, the cosec of 120 degrees. Well, cosec is one over sine, so we've got one over the sine of 120 degrees. Now, the sine of 120 degrees is the same as the sine of 60 degrees. 90 plus 30, 90 minus 30, uh, they will give you the same thing, using the symmetry around 90 degrees. There are other ways to get that, but um, for the moment, we'll stick with this as a method. Sine 60 is one of the standard values you're supposed to know. It's root 3 over 2. 1 divided by root 3 over 2 flips the fraction upside down, which gives you 2 over root 3. Third question, cotangent of pi by 3. Pi by 3, I think the very first thing I'd do would be to change that to degrees. Um, I still, even after a very long time, prefer to work in degrees than radians. And normally, unless it's really not wise to in the question, I would convert from uh, radians to degrees. Uh, certainly for a question like this, I would do. 
Cotangent of pi by 3. Well, pi by 3 is 180 divided by 3. 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. Cotangent of 60 degrees will be 1 over the tangent of 60 degrees. Tan 60 is one of the standard values you're supposed to learn. Uh, tan of 60 is root 3. So 1 over it is just 1 over root 3. The secant of 13 pi divided by 3 radians. Now, 13 pi over 3 is large. The question is, what's the best thing to do with it? Well, sine and cosine, secant and cosecant, they repeat every 360 degrees. I think the simplest thing to do with this, if you didn't have a calculator, is take away multiples of 360 degrees until it becomes a sensible size. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. So the first thing I'd probably do is just take away 360 degrees, take away 2 pi radians, because I know it'll be the same answer. A little bit of fraction work here. That'll be taking uh, 6 pi over 3. 13 take away 6 gives me 7 pi by 3. And then I can do the same thing again, take away another 2 pi radians. So that's taking away another 6 pi over 3. And that'll take me down to pi by 3. So the sec of 13 pi by 3, I've taken away 360 degrees twice. That takes me down to the same thing, uh, the sec of pi by 3. At this point, I think I would say that sec is 1 over, oh, it's the sec of 60 degrees. And then sec is 1 over cosine, so it's 1 over the cosine of 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 degrees is a standard value you're supposed to know, and it's a half. So you've got 1 divided by a half. And finally, we reach the answer, which is exactly 2. Obviously, if you have a calculator or you're working on a calculator paper, you don't need to do all of this work. OK, that is the end of the lesson. Uh, if you have the textbook, go to page 48 and have a go at exercise 3A. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.